This video will take you through the, uh, the, the seven different exercises for Lab 1 in my uh, COM 317 Digital Foundations uh, sections. We're going to start here with Illustrator. This, um, this lab kind of shows you some of the basic functions of the Illustrator Pathfinder tool, uh, also how to create a, a clipping mask, and then some of the functions of the image trace. So to start with, we're going to open our file that's called MyPathfinderExamples.ai and then you're going to set your initials in, uh, in two different colors with, uh, with stroke on them. So I'm going to click here on the Type tool and I'm going to click, it gives me lorem ipsum, move that up to 72 point type change the initials here to RM and I'm going to change this to maybe a little bit of a thicker typeface which will work better for this particular exercise. I'll take, uh, I'll take Cooper standard here. All right, so right now, Illustrator sees this as type because that's what you just made. You just made some type. And for us to really edit it and work with it, we need to turn it into an object. So to do that, while I have this object selected with my selected tool, selection tool, I go to the Type menu, and I say Create Outlines. Now, as far as Illustrator is concerned, these are no longer type characters. These are shapes. The other thing I want to do is we see one bounding box, and I want to see these as separate objects. So I'm going to do Object Ungroup. Now, when I click on it, those are separate objects. Okay, so what I want to change the appearance of this, and I want to put Stroke and Fill on it. Right now I've got Black Fill, no, uh, black fill, no Stroke. And if your appearance uh, menu is active. You'll see that here. If not, go down to your appearance menu, menu uh, under the window menu, and you can pick it up here. I'm going to put fill on here as, let's go with something orange that you can see very well. And then for stroke, I'll put about a three-point stroke on there. And now we can see that that's Got a black stroke with, with orange fill. I'm going to do the same thing with the M, except I'm going to put a different color on the fill. Maybe I'll go with something purple. And then a stroke of three points. And there's that. Now what I want to do is overlap these objects. And so I'm going to, with my selection tool, click and drag the M over the R. And I can either have the M in front, or if I want the R in front, I can simply go to Object, Arrange, Send to Back, and that puts the M behind the R. Now what I want to do is group them again. So I'm going to select both of them. You can just use your selection tool and click and drag like this to select multiple objects. I'm going to group them. Okay, and now... Let me zoom out a bit. I'm going to duplicate this object. And I can click on it and do Edit, Copy, Edit, Paste, and drag it into position. Or another way I can do that's a little faster, if I hold down the Option key, which you can't see, but I'm holding down the Option key right now, if I click and drag, it just makes more copies. Yes, I got it. Okay. Now, let's go to our Pathfinder function. So what we want to do is see how all these different functions work. So I'm going to go to Window, Pathfinder, this back up so we can see it. And I've got these shape modes and pathfinder modes all in the same order that you see here in the window. So to do a unite, I select it and then click on unite. And that's what the unite looks like. It combines those two. Okay, minus front, you might be able to guess, is going to get rid of the portions that are in front. So click on that. 
and it gives us that kind of an outline. And as you start to work with lots of different shapes that overlap in Illustrator, you'll find that these uh, Pathfinder functions, you might have to experiment with them with every different shape that you create, but they can give you lots of different effects and lots of uh, different ways of creating or emphasizing a certain part of an illustration. So let's do the exclude, divide, trim, merge, crop, outline, and minus back, which should get rid of the back part, right? And there we go. So that's just a, a simple introduction to some of the different functions in Pathfinder. Now for your assignment, what you'll do is you can save this file. And then for what you upload to Titanium, you'll do a file, save as, and then instead of making it an AI file, you going want to upload this as an SVG, a small vector graphic, and go ahead and save it as something like, you know, your name. Save as, and the first one's done. In the second part of this exercise, you're going to learn how to do a clipping mask in Illustrator. We're going to open the file called Lily Pads here. <clears throat> a clipping mask is where you have two objects, one on top of another, and then you create a mask so that the, the object that is behind shines it through uh, the object that is in front, and then it's also cropped away. Now, I'm sure you've seen these before. Uh, this will show you how to do it. So the first thing I'm going to do is change my artboard size. You can see this little box here. Uh, the picture is bigger than the artboard, so I'm going to change that by going into Document Setup, Edit Artboards, and I'm just going to roughly change my artboard size then I just click on my selection tool and it accepts the change. Alright now I'm going to command 0 to increase my size here. To create a clipping mask I've got my behind object and I'm going to want some of this lily pad photo to shine through. Now I need to create the front object so I'm going to do that with type. Click on my type tool and I'm going to type the word Lily and pads, and then I'm going to change it to 72 points. And then for to illustrate this, I want to get some type that's that's pretty thick. So I want to pick something that. And we'll try this a body extra bold. And then 72 points is the largest that I can set it in Illustrator. However, I can scale it and make it bigger. So let me just kind of drag this around. I'm going to click on this toggle, make it really big so we can see it in this example here. Okay, so lily pads is my front object. And to make this clipping mask, I select the first object and then I also have to select the object that is underneath. I can do that by holding down the shift key while I click on it. Now I've got the photograph selected and I also have the text selected. To make a clipping mask is very simple. I just go under object, clipping mask, make. And there you have it. So we'll save that as an SVG as well. And that one is done.
the third part of this exercise will introduce you to the image trace function in Illustrator. For that one, we are going to open the file, CSUF emblem rgb.jpg. So this is a copy of the CSUF logo. Now most logos are designed as vector images, but a lot of times when you download one from the internet, you're going to get a JPEG image. And, and that means, if you zoom in on it, it's pixelated. And so what we want to do is clean up that pixelization so that we have a CRISPR logo and, and save it as a vector image. And we do that through the image trace function. So again, I'm going to edit my artboards. You might or might not have to do this depending on how your, what size screen you're working on and so on. Just do this real quickly. There we go. All right. Now, to do an image trace, there are a couple of different ways to go about it in Illustrator. Uh, I, I can select it. There is an image trace window that you can open up, and that gives you a lot more options and controls. Uh, I encourage you to play around with that, but I'm just going to show you the quick and simple version here for this exercise. But note that they work pretty similarly. So when I click on my object here, and the, notice under the properties uh, palette here, it shows me image trace as an option. And so I have to have it selected, and I click on image trace, and this gives me the different options for image tracing. So if I want something that is really abstract, uh, maybe I would do, uh, let's do three colors. Let's do, let's do sketch dart. And then it goes through there and it changes it to this kind of an image. Undo that. If I'm wanting to recreate the logo in, in as much detail as I can, what I want to do is a high fidelity photo. So with the object selected, I go to image trace, high fidelity photo, let it do its tracing, and now I can't really see what it's done until I click the expand button. And now I can see all of the paths and everything that it is, has created. I deselect, and if I want to edit this, if I click on it, I get the whole object. So here is a case where instead of using the selection menu, I want to use the direct selection tool. So now I will click on, if I want to take, edit this logo, I can delete, click on the S, and then set some other type. We'll call this logo. Uh, we'll use uh, Garamond as a it's kind of a classic Roman Roman serif. So if that is 72 points, that might be a little too big. And let's put it into position. It's still just a bit big. Depending on what letters you're using, you might have different sizes. And then everything's fine except for the color there. We'd like to make that white. So I'm going to go up to my appearance. If you don't have this open, if you don't see this visible, you go to your window menu and you can click on appearance to make that. But it should be open just under your properties with the object selected. Click on fill. And then let me click on this little uh, color mixer. And I've got, I can pick that kind of a color or if I just want it to be white, I click on that swatch. And there we go. And we save that one as an SVG file. Uh, 
And that one's done. Moving right along, let's go into another image, this one a four color photo, and show how the uh, image trace function works with photographs to give you kind of some cool abstract effects. So we're going to open we're going to open this photo of a JPEG photo of a giraffe. Change our artboard size. Okay, so now what we want to do is select the photo, and when we go into Image Trace, we're going to look at some different options. In this case, we're going to take the Six Colors option. And notice when it, when it re-renders it, that it gets rid of this continuous tone of, uh, appearance that you get from, uh, from a raster image, and it's going to chop this up into different sections or different paths, clothes uh, paths within a color range that is constricted by the choice that I make here, six colors. And so that's the change that it makes. To go in ahead and accept that change, I have to click Expand. And now those are all editable objects with uh, paths and stroke and fill. All right, so if I deselect, again, if I use my selection tool, I get the entire object, and that's not really what I want to edit. I want to edit part of it. So I deselect, and now I'll use my direct selection tool, and I'm going to select this object right here, this area right in front of its ear, and I want to change the color not only to that, but to all the other objects that have the same color. And to do that, while I have the first one selected, I go to my Select menu, and I come down to Same, and say Same Fill Color. And now it's selected all of the closed paths that have that same color. Now I can double-click on that color, and color picker comes up, and I can start to find a color that I like. Maybe something kind of in this range. A little more saturated. Let's see what that looks like. There we go. Get a little more yellow. There we go. And it changes all of the objects that were selected at that time. To continue, let's say I want to create a color contrast here, and so with this kind of gold that I've picked up, I'd like to create what's called a complementary color, which is kind of its opposite color, or at least it's the opposite in terms of where it fits on a color wheel. So to do that, what I want to first know is what this, what the values are of this color. So I'm going to click on it, and I see my hue, saturation, and brightness. My hue is at 49 degrees. That's the important number. Color can be measured on a circle. A circle has 360 degrees. And this is saying that this hue responds to the 49th degree on a circle. It's got a saturation of 81%, a brightness of 79%. Okay, so 49 degrees is what I really want to know there. All right, now let's say I want to create a complementary color right here in this background area. So let me select that one. And then like we did some earlier with the gold, we're going to go select, same, fill color, and that picks up these little areas and then just a couple little spots over in here. So now this is the area that we want to create a complement of the gold in. So to do that, I've got them selected. I'm going to double click on the color palette and I'm going to change the hue from 227, which is what it originally is now, to 
the complement or the opposite of 49 degrees, which is what the gold is. So a color has a wheel has a circle has 360 degrees. If I subtract 49 degrees from 360, I would have 311 degrees. And then on the saturation and brightness, I won't be quite as precise, but I'll put those up to about, both about 80%. Click OK. And those are the opposite values of these. And that's a color complement. Okay, to save that one, File, Save As. And we'll say Giraffe SVG. The next one will show you a little different variation on the image trace technique. We're going to open the file for the Icelandic horse. Right there. And in this case, the color is, is rather muted already. And so what we're going to do is accentuate the fact that it doesn't have a, a lot of bright color in it. And we're going to change it to a grayscale image, but an abstract grayscale image. And then we're going to make it a little bit blue in parts to make it look even cooler and colder there in the tundra of Iceland. So, command zero, there's the pretty horse. We select it, and we see the bounding box around it. We're going to go to image trace, and in this time we want shades of gray. And so that will take the color out of it and also give it kind of a really abstract, almost like a, a watercolor painted kind of look. We'll click on expand and that shows all of our paths and, and, and uh, areas that we can select and we can deal with. Okay, deselect. Now, if I want to make this look a little bit more cold and cool, maybe what I do is I start going into some of these bright white areas, and I'm going to pull that down a little bit and make it a little bit blue and a little bit cooler. So I'm going to click on this one, and then maybe a few others. Maybe I'm not going to do uh, same for all this, but maybe I'll hold down my shift key. Maybe I'll click on that one. Maybe one over here, one down here. And that's enough to kind of see the effect here. And so now what I'm going to do is double click on my fill. And I'm going to try to find kind of a, a cool bluish gray. red out of that somewhat, and then maybe a little less green, take that maybe down to 75 or so, oops, there's the green, 75, and bump up the blue, let's say 150 or something like that, and there's kind of a blue, that might be a little bright or dark, drop that down maybe 130. This is how you can play around with your color values. This is your R for red, green, and blue channel. And I think that's a hue that I, I like fairly well, but it's, it's going to be too dark. That's fine. We'll change that in a minute. So I click OK, and that puts all those colors in there. And now, so it's not so distracting, I want to dial back the opacity. So I'm going to click here on Opacity, and let's bring that down, see, see what about 20% looks like. That's pretty good, but maybe even a little bit more there. Okay, if you like it less, that's fine too. And there we go. 